Welcome to Puzzle with Emilia. That's me and today we are preparing for the Swedish Yeksa Puzzle Nationals that are taking place very soon from 9th to 10th of March in Göteborg. As you know, whatever I do, I have to know the tiny tiniest details about everything. So, Today we're gonna uh, first take a look of some interesting points that I think you should also consider uh, before the competition. And then we're gonna practice with the previous year's puzzles that you may also know from the world. So if you're not coming for the Swedish nationals, you might be still interested about these puzzles. And then we are actually gonna take a good look who are we up against to so who are the best speed puzzlers in sweden but your first question might be what the heck you ain't swedish why are you going to the swedish nationals well that is actually an excellent question so of course we all know that not every country has too many competitions so of course i'm always looking for you know to have the competing experience and I already last year, uh, I was checking at the Swedish Association and the nationals that were coming. And then I was like, I sent the email to the association like, hey, could this tiny little Emilia from Finland also participate in your competition? And I was welcome to join. Uh, here I want to point out, which was also asked on their Instagram page. Um, here's the original uh, comment. In Swedish, I use Google Translate, uh, but just to make it clear that I'm not taking anybody else's place, uh, it's kind of like competing, but kind of like outside of the competition. So I am so, so excited um, to join. And I was trying to find all the details and information I could get from the Swedish website. I do not know Swedish at all. So I'm using Google Translate. If you're from Sweden and you see I'm doing some kind of uh, there is a mistake in my translations, please let me know in the comments. Uh, but there are a couple things because I want to consider before the competition. So first of all, I was reading the competition rules. They're usually pretty much the same for all events, especially if you've been in the world, it's pretty much the same. But here I actually wanted to point out uh, that it says participants must provide themselves with appropriate equipment to open any plastic seals on the puzzle box. And this I actually was wondering because obviously you can just rip with your hands the plastic, but I was wondering what if they used a new Ravensburger? Because I heard they don't have the plastic, they actually have a tape on the sides. So I'm really wondering what should this tool be or equipment that I should bring? Well, like what have people been using on the previous years, please let me know. But other than that, there wasn't anything like super special <coughs> here, but I always recommend to read the rules. Um, even if you're not the person like me who literally reads, like if you sell me like a phone contract or something, I actually read the, all the terms and conditions, even if it's 20 pages, but that's just me. But it's always good to uh, read. So there is nothing like, uh, you know, surprises because sometimes there is a different uh, stuff depending on competition. Then, of course, I'm very interested always what is the size of the table and not only what's the size of the table, what the material of the table is, how nearby are the other competitors. So I want to look um, images from the previous year and then I cross-check that it is actually the same location. So I think it's safe to assume, I might be wrong, um, that these are the actual uh, tables they're also going to use this year and I'm actually tiny a little bit worried about the material of this table because it looks a little bit like somehow like a fabric material so I think the puzzle pieces are not going to slide on that that's that might be a problem for my style um, but yeah at least now I know it's always better to have more information and then I was of course looking also at the schedule of course I know when is my category and stuff but always I want to know like okay when do I uh, have time to eat lunch then I'm not too full right before the next one or for me that I don't get like socially overwhelmed uh, so I want to see like when can I take breaks or go some other location to have a break or do I have time to go back to the hotel 
those are the things that I, I paid attention. Of course, I read everything else as well. I'm a little bit crazy that way, but yes. And I have to say, so far I have very high expectations for this event. I think they have sent a lot of information. They have like all this pre-ordered food and uh, all kind of stuff. So I have very high expectations and I am pretty sure that this Swedish association is totally going to deliver on that. But let's move on to practice with the puzzles. So these were used in the previous years. You can also see the results. Um, on the website or the, where actually it takes you to the Federation website, which is a great way to cooperate with them. Uh, also, these have been in the world, so we can also compare my time um, with the world. Uh, I just want to make sure I'm basically doing these puzzles with the video because it's convenient and people are interested. But in generally, I don't recommend just to practice and prepare with the previous year puzzles, no matter what the competition is. Because obviously they're not gonna, first of all, they're not gonna use the same puzzle again. And secondly, if you can pour the, those times, which can be like a good comparison, but you also need to be mindful of the fact that it is kind of like expired results. So especially if it's an annual event, you may want to consider that those people, the times that you're comparing is that they also had one year to improve um, themselves. So it's not really like affecting, uh, reflecting the situation uh, as now. So they might be way more uh, better and faster with the puzzles. But yeah, we're gonna do this and with the basic uh, bubble head uh, thing. So I'm gonna be commentating myself as I do these puzzles. Okay, here we go. So actually, so we're gonna do first um, the London postcard and then the Paris puzzle. So let's start with this one. Just to mention, I, as you can see, it wasn't in the original plastic and stuff. I have done this before. I would like to say I've done it once before, <laughs> um, but I may have done it actually twice. So I did it for the first time. Um, actually, it was, I think, week before the world. I found this from the store. I was so happy about it. And we can also check out um, after this, what was my actually time for the first time that I did this. I think I have it recorded somewhere. And I've also mentioned in my previous video that I don't generally like these postcard puzzles because they're not like easy. I mean, they are easy puzzles, but the issue with the easy puzzles is that when it's an easy puzzle, it's an easy puzzle for everybody. And um, because this is not kind of like my type of puzzle other than being generally easy, then I actually lose or I'm like slower than uh, more people than I would be with another puzzle. The issue is that even though it has nice details and colors, um, it kind of has random stuff. Like it has this random bird on the side and it has a uh, postal stamp then it has the big band and all kind of like patterns that are not like related to each other. So you need to remember also to watch the image in a way that what is where and what is going on. And nowadays, as you can see, I also, uh, I do short out the edges nowadays every time out. And I think I'm actually gonna go with that default strategy now on. I don't know if it's faster than uh, not shorting them out but that's what I'm gonna go with. Um, if you want to kind of like analyze from here what I, I could have done better um, after we will see what's the final time. But for example, those cream pieces, I collected them, but somehow I could not get even two pieces <laughs> attached to each other. And now I'm a little bit afraid that they're, they're over middle, so I need to get them together somehow or move them to the side. Uh, let's hope that it doesn't go that I need to move them again because it's always so annoying. But yeah, I think I do this puzzle pretty much the same way as everybody else. So you're kind of coming from from the sides, moving on to the middle part. The middle part with this is definitely the hardest one, especially kind of like the uh, the left side of the big pen is hard for me for some reason. So I remember when I did this first time, I was so determined to do the 
Big Ben building uh, very last, but uh, I'm hoping I will do it now before I do the hardest trickiest parts. Because actually it is not that hard because it, it's a, a darker blue from the down uh, downstairs and it's actually quite easy to put together. And yeah, you can see like the last pieces, they just look the same. There's just like gray, a little bit bluish and uh, white pieces. So you can get like really good st a start with this puzzle and then you can get stuck. At least that's uh, how it is for me. And I'm still surprised that they actually had this in the, in the Swedish Nationals, which was before the Worlds that year. And then the Worlds had the same puzzle. And then again, last year, the Swedish Nationals were before the Worlds and they had exactly the same puzzle that then was afterwards in the Worlds. So hopefully the Swedish Nationals will be my friend and they will give me also a puzzle this year that then will um, turn out to be in the Worlds as well. Of course, there's a lot of categories and stuff, but yeah, I think it's just uh, interesting going on over there. But hey, we're going to be finished with this first puzzle. And the final time is actually quite crazy, even though I have done this before. So it's going to be 41 minutes and 24 seconds. And now we are moving on right away um, to the second puzzle. Uh, so this as well, so this is actually the, from the previous year, I think. Yes, and this was also in the previous year's world. And this one I actually haven't done before. I borrowed this puzzle from my teammate, so that's also why it wasn't in the original plastic. And as you can see, I kind of do the full setup uh, before I start. So if you wish, you can add one minute or okay, maybe half a minute um, to my time if you really want to be like extra specific. Uh, but yeah, I think this is definitely harder and I know people want the tips with the flowers and, and the sky. Uh, but yeah, my first tip would be that please don't start with those because those are the hardest parts. So I was trying to come in together. Actually, yeah, I did almost all of the um, edges except uh, the little flower corner over there. And then I hop on right into the uh, little cream part. It was quite easy because it doesn't have that many pieces. And then I kind of continued from it. Uh, of course, from the sky, it's very good to build um, uh, the Eiffel Tower because those are easy to find, not too many either. And then I put in some most of the blue, uh, blue pieces uh, coming from the corner. And then of course, the road was actually kind of like all the black pieces. And those were quite easy to put in uh, as well. And then, of course, kind of like there was this like, yeah, you can see that little building. It was a little bit different because it's kind of like further away in the image than the corner building that I'm probably going to start building right now. I think it was just important because there was some kind of like patterns, like lines and stuff that I was just trying to get um, together. So yeah, I don't, I don't really like buildings on the puzzles either, but definitely in this puzzle it was easier than the flowers and the sky. And we're already 30 minutes. Um, so I have to say after the London postcard, this puzzle is going to definitely bring you back to reality because this was not like not a fun puzzle in, in a way that you're gonna know already with this puzzle that you're gonna have to go to the trial and error kind of style. And here I separated those uh, pieces. I tried to find something, but then I was like, okay, this doesn't make sense. I, I'm not able to figure out these flowers. Um, there was maybe a couple small details that you could place there, but not really. So I went to the shape uh, short thing uh, kind of thing because I just knew that it, it it would eventually lead to that anyway So I should just do it right away and uh, Yeah, I know that the shape sorting may feel like it's a waste of time and technically yes It actually is but it's also a waste of time to try to figure out something you cannot figure out So then you're gonna have to choose from the two uh, bad options and also uh, with the sky I was a little bit disappointed because I feel like in the reference image you can for example see that there's this kind of like a line going on 
uh, in the image, but it doesn't really show on the puzzle itself. So there's like no details. And also it's not like gradient blue all the way from the corner to the other side. It's like blue there and white there and everything. So I did the same thing. I did the shape shorting and then I just had to push it through because there was no other way with this puzzle. So just trial and error and yeah, just keep moving. Stay in your mind, just keep going, going faster, faster, faster. It sometimes help you. And the final time with this, 54 minutes and 59 seconds. Okay, so the puzzles are done. So for the London postcard, my time was 41 minutes and 24 seconds. And then for the Paris puzzle, which by the way, the full name is, I always forget it. Springtime in Paris, my time was 54 minutes and 59 seconds. Let's take a look how I would have done in the actual competition. So, in 2022, they did have the London postcard uh, in the Swedish Nationals. And they had the top three was Katarina Svensson, Frida Fessler and Lena Carlson. So technically I would have actually won uh, in the Swedish Nationals that year. But I said I had done that puzzle at least once, maybe even twice before. So obviously it's not that way comparable time. Let's take also a look how I would have done in the world. So in the world 2022, they had this puzzle in the class, uh, qualifying round A and the winning time was actually as crazy as 32 minutes and 46 seconds. So no chance in here. And actually, yeah, here you can also see Katarina who won the Swedish nationals on that same year because it was the same puzzle that now she had again in the world and her time is much 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 better so if this was basically her second time doing the same puzzle she would have beaten me to the ground with this time so with my time in the world I would have actually been seventh but once again um, it's hard to say who of these people have done this puzzle before and for who it was the first time. But then the springtime in Paris. And that was used in the Swedish Nationals in 2023. And over there we have the top three. Again, Katarina Svensson. And then we have Magdalena Svensson and I assume they are maybe sisters. And then we have uh, Julia Fernmer. I'm sorry for this pronunciation of these names. Um, I apologize, I'm not too familiar with the Swedish names and um, you know, last names in general. But here I would have actually been placed um, third and the winning time was 51 minutes and 56 seconds. Let's take also a look at the world once again, right after Swedish Nationals, same puzzle in the world, this time on a qualification round E. And here the winning time was actually 47 minutes and 25 seconds. No way, here I would have placed um, sixth uh, right before Tobias Primer, who is also a Swedish puzzler. But yeah, that, that puzzle was uh, uh, crazy. And once again, it's not only that, okay, this puzzle I have done, not done before, but I have seen the puzzle before and I know that this is the puzzle I'm going to do today, uh, take time and film it for the video. So. It's a little bit different ball game than having just a puzzle rebuilt in the spot. But yeah, pretty good result. I would say I'm proud of myself. Uh, very interesting puzzles. Um, 
the London postcard definitely easier. I think what makes it the Paris puzzle also kind of mentally easier is that it's so clear from the beginning that you have to go to the trial and error style. Uh, I think it's more annoying uh, style to do a puzzle if you're kind of forced into it and you were thinking beforehand that you're gonna be able to avoid doing it. Uh, but yes, definitely. I'm very excited to see what is the puzzle this year in the Swedish Nationals. And then I'm more excited to see if the same puzzle pops out in the world afterwards later this year. To be honest, it seems like there is some really strong speed puzzlers in Sweden. And it also makes sense because they have actually had these uh, nationals for many years now. So there's a lot of people with uh, competing experience. Also, they all, all do very well in the world. So and the Svensson seems to be a little bit unbeatable. And of course, I think also Sweden has the same thing as in Finland that sometimes people just pop out of nowhere and they're like super fast because they just found out that there's this speed puzzling thing. So I'm very excited to see. I will be doing an experience video after the event. But if you want to follow what's going on during the event, I recommend to follow my Instagram account, Puzzle with Emilia. And yeah, I've been also thinking about maybe doing some live or something, but I don't know yet. We'll see. But definitely on Instagram, you will see what is going on over there. If you have some wishes that you want to see or what you want me to film for the experience video, please let me know in the comments. But anyway, that's all for today. I don't have anything else. I will see you in Sweden or at least I'll see you next time. Bye bye.